Hello, good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How's your life, everyone? Hopefully you all are always in a good condition. Okay, firstly, let's say thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is giving us some time by Islamic comfort and fight comfort so we can believe that Islam is a true religion now and forever. Secondly, my salawat and salam Allah's Prophet Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now, well, ladies and gentlemen, the presentation today is about structure your grammar, structure your writing. Okay, let me read one by one the agenda today. The first is opening, the second is introduction, the third is presentation session, and the fourth is question and answer session, and the last one, but not at least, is closing. Okay, let me introduce our team. I'm Ila Yusrin Elma as your moderator, and then there is three presenters. The one is Panji Permana Sulaiman with the title, How to Recognize Verb, Adverb, Noun, and Adjective. And then Sari Utami as the second presenter with the topic is Degree of Comparison. And the third one is Sindaro Chitomara as the third presenter with the topic, the difference between past and present continuous. Ladies and gentlemen, let's open our meeting by saying Basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, let me mention the rules of this meeting. First, this is an oral presentation only, so no written materials could be delivered Therefore, I suggest you all as the participants to take notes. And then this webinar is a full of English forum session, so all activities will be delivered in English. And then the third one, all participants must turn off their camera and audio during this presentation. And the fourth, the presentation will be held for about five minutes for each presenter. And then all for prisoner will present the material in turn. And the seven, you may start asking questions since the presentation is started. Thank you. And then the next agenda is presentation session. Okay, for the first presenter is Panji Permana Sulaiman with the title, How to Recognize Verb, Adverb, Noun, and Adjective. Time is yours. Alright, thank you for moderator. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, how is your day? Hopefully, you are doing great and in a good condition today. So, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Panji Permana Sulaiman, and it's an honor for me to speak in front of you, a great and special participant. So, let's get started. At this time, we are going to talk about how to recognize a verb, adverb, noun, and adjective. Because sometimes, for some people, it, it is quite difficult and it is confusing them. Mrs. Ronnie, a teacher or tutor from Ingfield.com, an online English video lesson, said that it is very important, but it's very basic English grammar. Even if you are in the mid-level in learning English, so we'll help you to review and to make everything a little easier when you are doing more advanced in grammar lesson. All right, we have a symbol for this word. So the first is noun. Noun is, will, is going to be represented by N and then verb with V, adverb with A, D, P, and adjective with A, D, G. These are universal. So if you look at the dictionaries or some kinds like uh, grammar books, they will use it to make it easy to remember. All right, the first is noun. According to a Cambridge dictionary, noun is a word that refers to a person, place, thing, or event. So, uh, person is all people around you, and then uh, place is like a city names, 
country names and for thing is any things, any things, whether it is living things or non-living things. All right, the second is verb. Verb is an action word. For example, like run or thing and so on. We also have the verb that is non-action word. Alhamdulillah. I thank you and so on. So, verb is can be an action word, uh, even if it's like, sorry, you can turn up the microphone, please. All right, so, uh, verb is can be action word. You can actually see the action or non-action word. So things that you have to remember is we have a verb and we have an adverb. What is the adverb? So adverb is always describe the verb. So or it tells you how the action was done. For example, if we use the verb run, for example. So I'm going to tell you how I run. So the example is I run slowly. So run here is a is a verb, and slowly here is an adverb because it tells you how I run, or it tells you how the action was done. So these two things, verb and adverb, is a partner. So how about noun? All right, noun. We'll get the partner with adjective. Because adjective is describe the noun. So to make it easy to understand, let me give you an example. Uh, if we use the noun uh, cat, for example, cat, because cat is a noun, yes, living things. So you, will, you want to describe the cat. You can say like the color of the cat. You can say like uh, the shape of the cat. And you can say the size of the cat and so on. So the example is, the cat is cute. So cat here, cat here is a noun and cute here is an adjective because it describes the cat or it tells you how the cat looks like. All right. Then we have two partners here that you have to remember to make it easy for you. First is verb is a partner with adverb. And then the second uh, noun is a partner with adjective. So that's all for me. Uh, help. Hopefully, this material is helpful and useful for all of you. Thank you very much for your nice attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thanks a million for Panji Permana. This is a great presentation. For the next presenter is Sari Utami. Time is yours. Hi everyone, let's move to the next topic with me, Sari Utami. And I'm going to share you about degree of comparison or degree of adjective. This topic is still correlate, correlate with before. Uh, okay, now in this occasion, I will tell you how do we compare something. In Bahasa, for example, pacar saya seganteng Justin Bieber. How do we say? My boyfriend as handsome is as handsome as Justin Bieber. In this case, we can use degree of comparison. There are three types of degree of comparison. The first is positive degree. It's used to compare the same things. For example, John is as tall as Celine. Tall is an adjective. And we use S plus adjective plus S. It is positive degree. And the second is comparative degree. It's used to compare two things. Uh, for example, John is taller than Tom. By adding 
ER in the ending of adjective, but if the adjective more than one syllable, for example, handsome, we use more before adjective. For example, my boyfriend is more handsome than my ex-boyfriend. It is a comparative degree. And the last is superlative degree is used to compare more than three things. For example, Dev is tallest than John and Tom. By adding EST in the ending of adjective, and but if the adjective more than one syllable, we use the most before adjective. For example, my husband is the most handsome in the world. So uh, it is uh, comparing three persons. So I can conclude that the form of degree of comparison are the first is for positive degree, we use S plus adjective plus S. The second for comparative degree, by adding ER in the ending of adjective, and if the adjective more than one syllable, we use more plus adjective plus then. And the last, for superlative degree, we use EST in the ending of adjective, and if the adjective more than one syllable, we use the most before adjective. In the form of degree of comparison, there are some adjectives that cannot apply with the form before it called irregular adjective. Okay, remember the irregular adjective. Exa the example of them are, the first is the adjective word good. Good is one syllable, but it cannot apply the form uh, that we di discussed before good the comparative degree of good is better no gooder and the superlative degree of good is best no goodest and the second is the adjective word bad the comparative degree of bad is worse the superlative degree of bad is worst the last the adjective word little the comparative degree is less and the, the superlative degree is less. So for these words, they don't follow any pattern that we discussed before. So remember uh, this degree. Okay, the last from me that I got from expert from Al Curtis Turner say that the more you practice, the better you'll be. The harder you trend, the great in you, Delcy. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot for study Utami. It's, it is a great presentation. Let us now for Sintaro Sitemorang, time is yours. Okay, hello everyone. Thanks, moderator, for the time. I'm Sintaro Sutomorang. Here, I want to tell you about the differences between past continuous and present continuous. I know nowadays we still confuse how to difference these two, two tenses. Okay, let's move to the past continuous. I want to tell you about the form. The form is the positive form. The positive form for past continuous is subject plus to be plus for in subject plus to be plus for in and for the negative form is subject plus to be plus not plus for in remember the to be is was or were was or were remember that let's move to the usage of this tenses the past continuous the first usage, action that lasted for some time in the past. 
action that lasted for some time in the past. Okay, okay let's move to the example sentence. Yesterday, I was working in the office. Yesterday, I was working in the office. We, let's we analyze this sentence. Yesterday is the time in the past. I is the was, is the to be working is the for plus in and in the office is the object. And the second example last week they were studying English. Last week they were studying English. Last week is the time they is the subject were is the to be studying is the verb in and English is the object. Okay, let's move to the second usage of this past continuous. Uh, the usage is an action that was on progress in the past, but was interrupted by another action. An action that was in progress in the past, but was interrupted by another action. Okay, I will give you an example. I was eating when my phone rang. I was eating when my phone rang. In this sentence, there are two tenses. The first tense is the past continuous. And the second one is the simple. So if we combine these two sentences, we will, give a, we will get a meal. So we can know from the first sentence is interrupted by the second action. The first action is I was eating. It's interrupted by another action. My phone rang. And let's move to the second example. Is we were studying when they saw the tragedy. Same with the first example. The first action is we were studying. It's interrupted by they saw the tragedy. They saw the tragedy. It's the second action. Okay, that's all for past continuous. And let's move to the present continuous. Okay, let's we discuss the, the form. The positive form of present continuous is subject plus to be plus form in. Okay, subject plus to be plus form in. And the negative form is subject plus to be plus form in. And remember, again, the to be in present continuous is is or m or r is or m or r is m r remember that okay let's move to the usage of present continuous the first usage is actions that are happening now actions that are i will give you an example i am teaching grammar i am teaching grammar i is the subject m is the teaching m is the to be teaching is the verb in Grammar is the object. Let's move to the second example. They are playing football. They are playing football. They is the subject. Are is the to be. Playing is the verb in. Football is the object. And let's move to the second the second usage of present continuous. Future plans. If you have any plans in the future, you, you can use this tense. Okay, we will give you an example again first one i'm taking a vacation i'm taking a vacation in august i is the subject m is the to be taking is the verb in a vacation is an object in august is your future plan in august okay let's move to the second example she is going to the party tonight she is going to the party tonight she is the subject is is the to be Going is the verb in and to the party is object. Tonight is the time for your future plans. She is going to the party tonight. Okay, that's for the presentations. To conclude this presentation, how to difference the past continuous and present continuous? The easy ways to see the differences is look at the to be. Look at the to be. I told you again, to be. See, for past, the to be was or were. Was or were for past continuous. And for present continuous is use is or am or are. Is, am, are. Okay, I hope this information will be useful for you.
And I think that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thanks for Sindaris Dumura. It is a great presentation. And now we come to answer and question session. But before that, please mention your question in the chat box with your name. Well, ladies and gentlemen, any question maybe? Okay, we open three question first. If you want to ask me or our team, I mean, you can chat in the ch chat room. question guys all right uh, I will mention the topic of our presentation and for Panji it is how to recognize verb adverb noun and adjective and then for Sari the materials is about the degree of comparison and from Sindaro the materials is about how to difference past continuous and present continuous. If you want to ask our, I mean, if you want to ask us, you can mention your name and your question in the chat room. We wait until five minutes, until 28 minutes again. Don't be nervous or worry guys, we still wait your question. Okay, I will answer the question from uh, from Nadella. Okay, Nadella. Uh, she asked that another example for the compar com comparative degree about words that are unused able to use EST. Okay. Uh, as I explained before, 
the adjective that not use est is the adjective for the for adjective if the adjective more than one syllable so how to count the syllable uh you can use you can see the pronunciation in the dictionary or the oxford dictionary uh, for example good good the pronounce the pronunciation of good is one syllable nah uh, so good uh, the superlative is best it is uh, an ir irregular uh, irregular adjective sorry for example cold 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 is one syllable is used est for superlative degree yes uh, if the silo is the adjective more than one syllable for example handsome or dangerous or uh dangerous for example dangerous 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 the pronunciation of dangerous is three syllable so the pattern of dangerous is used the most uh if you want to see more example the adjective uh, you can see the, the the dictionary is the most information uh, on it thank you Okay, for Miss Nadella, have you satisfied with uh, the answer from Sari Utami? I think it is uh, could be satisfied yet. Uh, maybe any question again for our participant? My pleasure, Nadella. And then maybe any question again? from the others. We will wait until three minutes again. Oh yeah, I want to give uh, appreciate for Sari Utami for her answer. It is a great answer for question from Nadella. And for the other participant, oh yes. All right, there is question again from Gina. The question is about if we already used it, should we use verb straight to? Okay, it is a great, pretty, Question from Gina and also from Nadella last time. We will try to answer, but before that, please wait a minute. We are really, really sorry for, for Gina because we have a limited time. So we want to give our answer via Gmail. Next time I will share or send our answer. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we finally we come to the last agenda. We would like to say thanks a million for presenter and all of the audience for 
active and participation. The conclusion from presentation today is about from Panji, the how to recognize verb adverb and noun and adjective verb is action word or not. Adverb is describe verb and adjective describe noun and then noun is a person, place or thing. And then from Chintaro, is this the difference of past and present continuous? Past and con usable of past, it is action that lasts for some time and interrupted by another action. And then from present continuous is used from for action is happening now and future plan. And then for Sinda, from Sari, I mean, uh, it is about degree of comparison. It is superlative, comparative, and positive degree. Okay, that's all for us. Hopefully, the presentation will give benefit for us. Thanks for your attention. See you later. Wabili Taifik Walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.